In this video, I want to solve the polynomial equation x cubed plus 1 equals 0. I want to solve this for all of its complex roots. Notice if I subtract 1 from both sides, I end up with x cubed is equal to negative 1. And therefore, solving this polynomial equation is equivalent to finding all of the complex cube roots of negative 1. Therefore, I'm going to solve this equation using the technique of complex roots. So let's take our number negative one here. This is gonna be our complex number z. If we put this into its polar form, its modulus is gonna equal one. Its argument is then gonna equal pi. That is to say e to the pi i is equal to negative one. That's the observation we're using here. Therefore, x, if we take the cube root of both sides, will give us e to the, well, we have to replace, we have to replace this angle with anything that is coterminal to it. So we actually take, you have to take pi plus two pi k. You have to consider all those possibilities there. So you're gonna cut that by a third, in which case that's gonna give us pi thirds plus two pi thirds k. And so we are gonna end up with three possible uh, complex roots. So the first one, the principal root, we'll call it w zero here. This is gonna be e to the i pi thirds plus 2 pi thirds times 0, like so. The next one would be w1. This is when that value k is equal to 1 in that situation. So you get i pi thirds plus 2 pi thirds times 1. And then the last one, we'll do that one in red. We'll call it w2. That's equal to e to the i pi thirds plus 2 pi thirds times 2 like so. And so then we just need to simplify these numbers here. Well, of course, with the first one, since you have two pi thirds times zero, it just disappears. So we just have to consider the complex number e to the pi i over three. This is the same thing as cosine of pi thirds plus i sine of pi thirds, which is the same thing as one half plus i root three over two. So this is our first cube root of negative one. What about w1 here? What's the next one? In this case, um, you times by the one, you end up with e to the i, we have to add these together. That's gonna be a three pi over three, which I can simplify that thing. That's gonna be e to just the pi i. Oh, that's equal to negative one, we saw that earlier. And this is actually the real, this is the real cube root that we're used to. Like you take the cube root of negative one. Oh yeah, negative one cubed is negative one, so it's its own cube root as well. We detected that one. Clearly this is a non-real cube root of negative one. And what about the last one here, w2? Well, you're gonna take two times, two times two pi thirds. That of course is gonna give us four pi thirds. Like so, add those exponents together. We get e to the i times five pi thirds, like so. And so the last one is gonna give us e, well, excuse me, it's gonna give us cosine of five pi thirds plus i sine of five pi thirds. So now remember the angle five pi thirds. This is an angle in the fourth quadrant that references pi thirds. And so this is the same thing as cosine of pi thirds, in fact, minus i sine of pi thirds, which just kind of feels like what we did before, right? Uh, this is going to equal one half minus i root three over two, like so. Which, let's come up for a second. All right, so look at our complex roots here. So we had one half plus i root three over two. We had negative one, which is the real one, which could, is easier to predict. And then we have one half negative i root three over two. I want you to notice that these numbers right here are actually complex conjugates of each other. Notice the change of signs, like so. We actually get as a consequence of the uh, fundamental theorem calculus that whenever you have a real polynomial, like in this case, x cubed plus one equals zero. If you're trying to solve a polynomial equation and you get complex roots, they always come in con they always come in conjugate pairs. And so as you're cycling through these roots, like you this k value as it ranges from zero to two, um, when you get through the second half, the second half is just going to be conjugates of the first half. And so that actually can speed up the process dramatically here. Um, as we're trying to look for these roots, it's solving these polynomials, right? I actually could have skipped this entire step here. Do, 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 could have ignored all of this, no 
knowing that, hey, if this was a solution, then it's conjugate would have been another solution as well. So once I did this one, the first one, and then I figured out negative one, I could have then be like, oh, conjugate got me the last one. So I could actually sped up this process. But for the sake of example, I went through all of them here.